Good morning, my tubies, my Teletubbies. Good morning. It is, I think it's 4.30 in the morning. I couldn't sleep. I don't know. I was, uh, I, I just, just couldn't sleep. I don't know what it, what, what it was. Uh, maybe because I slept so much this afternoon, you know. And, woo! But anyway, I did get at least five hours of sleep. And... <clears throat> For this evening, not to mention the hours that I got of sleep earlier or today. Today is, well, yesterday, actually. It was uh, Sunday. I had a wonderful Christian meeting. I had my Bible study with my two best friends. Um, the ones that I've known since I was 16 years old. And we have our Bible study on uh, Sundays at two o'clock and then I have the other study at four o'clock <clears throat> which actually we could study together if I put us all on zoom I'm gonna I'm a see how they feel about that uniting together like that but anyway I just wanted to share this video this morning because I felt so appreciated um, yesterday when my son called me and he just totally built me up and made me feel so great. Well, hold on, that's the coffee I'm making early this morning. Hold on, my tubies. But anyway, um, let me get my coffee. Woo. I just wanted to share this video because I felt so appreciated because my son knows that I have been working really hard <clears throat> when it comes to trying to strip off the old personality and put on the Christ-like personality that we are instructed to do. And when I used to have a drinking problem that I had to definitely take care of, I had to remove some things out of my life, actually, and <clears throat> get the support that I needed. And now that I got the support that I needed, everything is just running very smoothly in that area abusing alcohol i know how jehovah feels about drunkards and that just i couldn't i couldn't you know <clears throat> my conscience couldn't sit well with that but i had some things going on that i needed to address and i needed to get rid of so that i can get the help that i needed which was not permitted in the situation i was in but like i said i just want to share these words of encouragement that my son called and he said these things to me and it shows that children can be a blessing. You know, they can be a blessing and I'm just fortunate. I'm one of the fortunate ones that I am blessed to have such a wonderful, wonderful son. Anyway, here it is. Hey, good morning, mama. Can you listen for a second? Yes. I woke up this morning and I wanted to say, you know, I'm really so proud of you, Sheena. You know, I know that I was very hard on you at times. And I was thinking about, you know, just, I'm so proud of you, Mama. I really am. And, I, you know, and there were times I was so hard because I wanted so much more for you because I knew you are worth so much. And I'm just like, I was just thinking, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of you, Sheena. You know, you came such a long way. Really. And I just, wow. I'm, I just wanted to say that, you know? Really, really? That's so kind of you. Thank you. Really? I'm very proud of you, Mama. I know it hasn't been easy, you know? No, it hasn't. It's been a battle. I know, and you... Jehovah's helped me, too. Yeah, I'm very proud of you, Sheena. I've noticed that you need your baby, you know? I tell you. <laughs> well, that's so nice, though. That's words of encouragement. Thank you. It's true, Sheena. I say, you know? Words of encouragement. Definitely my she -ra. You're my she -ra, Sheena. <laughs> that is so nice, Lucy. Oh, I had to sleep well? today to check out. Anyway, that was it. And do you know how encouraging that is and how motivating that is when you have your son or your children? You know, this doesn't only apply for me, but I'm sure there's so many parents out there who can use words of encouragement like that, especially when you're a parent and you as a single parent. And you did everything in your power, you know, to raise successful, God-fearing children who are going to be able to uh, succeed with you or without you. 
I think that's what every parent should strive for. You have certain goals that you set for your children and you work your butt off to try to make sure they achieve those goals. Like the goals that I had for my children is for them to be God-fearing on God and Jesus Christ team. I wanted them to have careers, not jobs. I wanted them to uh, be productive members of society. I wanted them to be well-spoken and educated. Those are the things that were important to me. And I wanted them to be able to get along and be okay, you know, without me. Because I don't know, my days are not promised to me. None of our days are promised to us. I could be gone today or tomorrow. And I want to make sure that my children are equipped. And they are, both of them, my son and my daughter. My daughter right now, she's going through her little journey. And I pray for her every single day, you know. Um, and that's, that's, that's the best that we can do as parents. You know, you keep your children in prayer. And you, you wish and hope for the best. And I know that when it comes to my son and my daughter, when I gave birth to them, I gave them over to Jehovah immediately. I made it very clear to Jehovah that I don't know how to be a good parent. I don't know. This is new to me, you know, and um, please, Father, accept Lewis and Samara as your very own. So I handed my children over to God from the straight out the gate. And think Jehovah is a, a wonderful father. He's taken very good care of of his children. He's a very good father, you know, and um, I pray for them all the time, every day. I pray for my grandchildren. I pray for my son-in-law. I pray for my brother. I pray, you know, and that's, that's pretty much, and, and Jehovah is so good because he's hearing my prayers, you know. Uh, there's times when I have gotten so depressed, you know, I felt so down because I'm working really hard right now to do things Jehovah and Jesus Christ away. Excuse me, but I'm trying really hard. And sometimes when you see that you're working really hard to live right and do right, and you see all these people who don't give a damn about God or Christ, and they practice all kind of wicked things, and they always seem to prosper. While you're sitting here struggling and struggling, and you know, you gotta take from Peter to pay Paul, and you, you, you're struggling a bit, and, and you see these people who don't give a, a hoot about God, and yet they they got money for this, they go on a vacation for that, they're, 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 everything seems so good for these people. And at times that can be a little dis discouraging. It can be discouraging, you know, but you have to stay close to your Heavenly Father, which is what I do. And I'm telling you, Tubies, my Teletubbies, I have to listen to this... Um, chapter in Psalms chapter 73. And I have to listen to this like every week. I, I have to, you know, because it, it helps me to stay focused and it helps me to um, um, stay spiritually strong. It does. So I'm going to share this with you. This is Psalms chapter 73. And, 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 and hopefully this will help you as well. When you see that you're working so hard to do what's right and other people, they don't give a damn about right or wrong. And yet they seem to be prospering and they seem to be doing so well. So hopefully this will help you too. This is Psalms chapter 73. And this is from the Good News Bible. Chapter 74, no, I need a chapter prayer. 73. Let's see. Chapter so, 74, nope, 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 a prayer. Chapter 73, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on chapter please. 74, book 3, The Justice of God. God is indeed good to Israel, to those who have pure hearts. But I had nearly lost confidence, my faith was almost gone because I was jealous of the proud when I saw that things go well for the wicked. They do not suffer pain. They are strong and healthy. They do not suffer as other people do. They do not have the troubles that others have. And so they wear pride like a necklace and violence like a robe. Their hearts pour out evil, and their minds are busy with wicked schemes. They laugh at other people and speak of evil things. They are proud and make plans to oppress others. 
They speak evil of God in heaven and give arrogant orders to everyone on earth, so that even God's people turn to them and eagerly believe whatever they say. They say God will not know, the Most High will not find out. That is what the wicked are like. They have plenty and are always getting more. Is it for nothing, then, that I have kept myself pure and have not committed sin? O oh God, you have made me suffer all day long. Every morning you have punished me. If I had said such things, I would not be acting as one of your people. I tried to think this problem through, but it was too difficult for me until I went into your temple. Then I understood what will happen to the wicked. You will put them in slippery places and make them fall to destruction. They are instantly destroyed. They go down to a horrible end. They are like a dream that goes away in the morning. When you rouse yourself, O oh Lord, they disappear. When my thoughts were bitter and my feelings were hurt, I was as stupid as an animal. I did not understand you. Yet I always stay close to you, and you hold me by the hand. You guide me with your instruction, and at the end you will receive me with honor. What else do I have in heaven but you? Since I have you, what else could I want on earth? My mind and my body may grow weak, but God is my strength. He is all I ever need. Those who abandon you will certainly perish. You will destroy those who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, how wonderful to be near God, to find protection with the Sovereign Lord, and to it's proclaim fine, okay. all that He has done. So that's what I listen to on a regular basis. That's from the Good News uh, translation. And then I like to listen to it from the message. It's uh, another translation called the message when it comes to Psalm 73. Because it shows you how even though the wicked may uh, prosper right now, but Jehovah God has placed them on slippery ground. And in the blink of an eye, like overnight, disaster can hit these people. And when you're on slippery ground and you don't have Jehovah there to help pick you up, you're just doomed. That's why so many people end up on drugs and so many people end up being alcoholics. You know, um, hold on. Who is that? That's so early in the morning. Somebody's sending me whatever. Anyway, uh, I, um, I would have to deal with really at five o'clock in the morning. People really, I know people got problems and I am an advice coach. Yes. And I will definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, like I was saying, slippery ground is where God places people. You see some people, we all go through problems and we all go through hardships. But the difference is when you have, when you're on Jehovah God and Jesus Christ team, Jehovah helps you get through. You don't have to depend on alcohol. You don't have to depend on drugs. You don't have to depend on being promiscuous or sleazy whores and things like that. You can depend on Jehovah God. And that's what, when he helps you, when you slip and fall, he helps to get you back up. And you get up and you, you, you become stronger and stronger so that you don't have those falls and those slips anymore. Anyway, here is the message from Ace, um, of Psalm 73 from Asaph. Psalm 73, an Asaph psalm. No doubt about it, God is good. Good to good people, good to the good hearted. But I nearly missed it, missed seeing his goodness. I was looking the other way, looking up to the people at the top, envying the wicked who have it made, who have nothing to worry about, not a care in the whole wide world. Pretentious with arrogance, they wear the latest fashions in violence, pampered and overfed, decked out in silk bows of silliness. They jeer, using words to kill, they bully their way with words. They're full of hot air, loudmouths disturbing the peace. People actually listen to them. Can you believe it? Like thirsty puppies, they lap up their words. What's going on here? Is God out to lunch? Nobody's tending the store. The wicked get by with everything. They have it made, piling up riches. I've been stupid to play by the rules. What has it gotten me? A long run of bad luck, that's what. A slap in the face every time I walk out the door. If I'd have given in and talked like this, I would have betrayed your dear children. Still, when I tried to figure it out, all I got was a splitting headache. 
until I entered the sanctuary of God. Then I saw the whole picture. The slippery road you've put them on, with a final crash in a ditch of delusions. In the blink of an eye, disaster. A blind curve in the dark, and nightmare. We wake up and rub our eyes. Nothing. There's nothing to them, and there never was. When I was beleaguered and bitter, totally consumed by envy, I was totally ignorant, a dumb ox in your very presence. I'm still in your presence, but you've taken my hand. You wisely and tenderly lead me, and then you bless me. You're all I want in heaven. You're all I want on earth. When my skin sags and my bones get brittle, God is rock firm and faithful. Look, those who left you are falling apart. Deserters, they'll never be heard from again. But I'm in the very presence of God. Oh, how refreshing it is. I've made Lord God my home. God, I'm telling the world what you do. Isn't that beautiful? That's why I always like to read verses from different versions of the Bible. I like the ERV, the Easy Read. I like the NASB. I like the contemporary English. I like the message because the message is like really down to earth, you know, and it helps to get the message across. I also do research on the scriptures that I read. I go on uh, Google and I research it thoroughly um, for myself. But back to the topic, I just wanted to share that um, compliment or that encouragement that my son uh, gave to me, you know, because I had got my feelings hurt a little bit when he was... Uh, he had got his shot, his second shot for this COVID. And I just wanted to show him that he's not alone. So his second shot, he wasn't feeling so well. You know how that goes. My second shot, I was 12 hours, like I had the flu or something. But he wasn't feeling so well and he was tired. So I wanted to surprise him. I knew he wanted some chicken wings. And I went and got these chicken wings and some french fries. And I came over to the house, his house, uh, and I didn't want him to be out of bed. I just wanted to drop the food off to make sure that he's eating. And when I came over, you know, he was tired. And and, and it, it wasn't received very well, but he was just, you know, very tired, you know. But um, that kind of hurt my feelings because I just wanted to show him that I'm, I'm there for you. Like when he was moving, I was up at 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning, I think. And I was ready. Let me come over, man. We can do this, you know. Um but he, he, he didn't, you know, I think he, I'm hoping he don't see me as this old woman who can't please. Because the next day I helped people from my church move. We were moving couches, love seats, tables, and it was just women. So if I can help the people of my church uh, move, why wouldn't I help my son? You know, so, and I got to make my, my kids know that, you know, a, a parent likes to feel like they're needed. You know, I'm a parent, even though my children are grown, I still love them and I still want to be their safety net. And you know, there's things that parents do that are wrong and they want to make amends. They want to try to, the second time around now with no alcohol involved, I want to make amends. You know, I want to try to repair some of the damage that I've done, but I have to have that opportunity, which is why I had talked to my daughter and said, we need to go into family counseling. We need to try to work through these things. But, you know, you can't force people to do what they don't want to do. And, you know, you just have to let people go through their journey and respect their right to go through their journey and um, just be there when they're when they're ready. And, you know, you hope that it's not too late and you're not dead and gone. But I think you guys get the uh, picture of what I'm trying to say. But like I said, this made me so very, very happy. So happy, I want to play it again because it was just so great. It made me feel really good. It, it helped to lift my spirits greatly. Yeah. Hey, good morning, Mama. Can you listen for yes. a second? Yes. I woke up this morning and I wanted to say, you know, I'm really so proud of you, Sheena. You know, I know that I was very hard on you at times. And I was thinking about, you know, just, I'm so proud of you, Mama. I really am. And, I, you know, there were times I was so hard because I wanted so much more for you because I knew you are worth so much. And I'm just like, I was just thinking, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of you, Sheena. You know, you came such a long way. 
really. And I just, wow. I mean, I just wanted to say that, you know? Really, really? That's so kind of you. Thank you. Really? I'm very proud of you, Mama. I know it hasn't been easy, you know? No, it hasn't. It's been a battle. I know, and you... Jehovah's helped me, too. Yeah, I'm very proud of you, Sheena. I know that you need your babe, you know? I tell you. <laughs> well, that's so nice, though. That's words of encouragement. Thank you. It's true, Sheena. I say, you know? Words of encouragement. Definitely my she you're my sheep, of Sheena. <laughs> Do you know how good that made me feel when he said that I'm his she I'm his she That's nice. He's, you know, I'm just overwhelmed with these are tears of joy, you know. I'm so grateful. I really am. Anyway, my tubies, my Teletubbies, I just wanted to share that with you because, um, you know, you share good times, um, not only bad times or whatever, or narcissists and talk about negativity or whatever you know you got to share the good times too but that really really made my day and it, it encourages me to work even harder to be honest anyway this is sheila true love truly loving you always and may jehovah god by all means bless you and may your children if they're giving your heart way to go may they wake up eventually and recognize you know that they should definitely have honor and respect for their parents that's the first command with the promise. If they want things to go well for them or continue to go well for them, they have to watch how they treat their parents. It's important. Parents are not perfect. They mess up. And as long as you have a parent who's willing to try to make amends and trying to repair the damage, yeah, I think you just need to give them a break and, and, and work together. That's, that's pretty much all I can say on that. Anyway, this is Sheila True Love, truly loving you always. Until the next time, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.